Within these two types of tests, emissions and susceptibility tests, uh, there are two classifications. Uh, one would be conducted tests, which are primarily performed on interconnecting cabling, such as uh, communication lines and power lines. Testing for conducted emissions or immunity is not required on fiber optic lines, uh, non-conductive lines, and is not required on non-current carrying lines, such as uh, metallic hoses or hydraulic lines uh, or even grounding straps in most cases. Uh, the second classification is radiated tests. This is where we uh, will measure the radiated response emitted from the product for emissions or subjecting the equipment to a radiated electromagnetic environment uh, in an effort to determine if it becomes susceptible at a given frequency or amplitude level. In MIL standard 461, uh, the, these individual test methods for emissions and immunity in radiated and conducted tests are uh, designated uh, using uh, a two-letter combination followed by a three-digit number. Uh, the number for, is only for references, uh, but can be broken down as follows. A C would, would stand for uh, a conducted test, an R would stand for a radiated test, an E would stand for an emissions test, and an S would stand for a susceptibility test. So for example, conducted emissions requirement would be designated as a CE, a radiated emissions test would be designated as an RE, uh, radiated susceptibility would be designated as an RS, and a conducted susceptibility test would be determined as a CS. Uh, these numerical uh, numbers afterwards uh, would range between 101 to 199. Now there's a uh, an applicability chart, a user applicability chart in MIL standard 461 uh, which allows the the user of this document to determine which tests within this document would be applicable for their product. Uh, the, the chart as you can see it breaks out on the left hand side the individual platforms that could be used in any Department of Defense uh, procurement activity. Uh, along the top uh, of this chart lists all of the applicable tests or potentially applicable tests in 461F. So for example, uh, the top line shows surface ships, uh, equipment that could be installed in surface ships regardless if it's top side or, or, or below decks. Uh, CE-101 would be an applicable test. CE-102 would be an applicable test. Uh, CE-106 is shown as an L, which stands for limited applicability, which we'll get to in a minute. Uh, CS-103, 104, and 105 are specific, uh, mainly dependent on the type of equipment uh, or devices in, uh, integrated into that equipment. Uh, CS-109, again, a limited applicability test. CS-114 is, a, is a, an applicable requirement. Uh, CS-115, specific to the equipment. CS-116 is an applicable uh, conducted susceptibility test. RE-101 and 102 are both applicable in this case. RE-103, again limited. RS-103 and RS-101 are both applicable. And then RS-105 is in limited application. Uh, now, the reason for the limitations would be, again, based on the actual platform. If the device is con considered installed uh, uh, topside or above decks on a ship, some of these tests may be applicable, some may not. In addition to that, uh, equipment that could be installed below decks may have applicable tests and, and may have some tests excluded. As we're getting ramped up uh, as a customer to perform a particular uh, certification test to 461, uh, there are some general requirements here uh, needed to uh, be prepared to perform this certification uh, project. The first is a test procedure. Now, MIL standard 461 strictly requires that uh, an electromagnetic test procedure, EMITP, be developed and approved by not only the certification test house and the customer or manufacturer of the equipment, but also the procurement group. Uh, the test procedures include development um, uh, of each detailed test requirement, uh, including all the methods and applicable limits for emissions or test levels for susceptibility, 
uh, details on any tailoring activities required uh, based on the, the, the type of equipment or any special requirements that the procurement group has uh, asked that this equipment meet before they uh, accept approval of it. Now any justification for modifications made to the equipment must be defined by MIL Standard 461F. The operation of the equipment while it's being tested and evaluated to these test requirements must be clearly understood. Uh, operating modes of that equipment uh, can vary depending on the complexity of the equipment. There could be multiple modes of operation that may need to be evaluated. Uh, and MIL Standard 461 specifies that the uh, equipment should be tested in all operating modes, but at a minimum, tests shall be performed under the following conditions. The first, operating modes that which produce the maximum emissions or expected to produce the maximum emissions, either radiated or conducted, shall be used for radiated and conducted emissions tests. Uh, in addition, uh, operating modes which are considered to be most susceptible to EMI uh, during susceptibility tests shall be used. Uh, this is where we are able to determine absolute worst case on the emission, uh, radiated and conducted emissions characteristics of the equipment and the most vulnerable uh, state that this equipment will be in during the actual tests. Uh, next would be the EUT insta uh, installation and orientation. MIL Standard 461 doesn't really tell you how the equipment should be oriented for the actual test. Uh, however, they do specify that uh, the orientation which could produce the greatest emissions uh, or be most vulnerable to a uh, radiated or conducted field shall be positioned closest to the transmit antenna, mainly most important for radiated susceptibility and radiated emissions testing. Now, earlier revisions of the standard allowed you to do what was called near-field probing, where you take a spectrum analyzer and a near-field loop and wave it slowly over the equipment to determine peak amplitudes for the emissions test. Uh, this would usually be found near cables, connectors, or large apertures on the equipment. Um, but because of uh, improper use of that requirement, uh, that's been dropped in MIL Standard 461F. In general terms, uh, you would take a look at that equipment to determine where it's most likely to have uh, an emissions or susceptibility issue, uh, such as I mentioned, checking uh, for large cable connectors, uh, large interface plates, large LCD uh, screens and displays, uh, gasket areas, uh, latches, doors, covers, and so forth are likely to be good candidates for, for that type of issue.